please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good evening and welcome to Political Exchange. This is really the mystery over Christian Michel. The Augusta Western VVIP chopper deal is back in the limelight. Christian Michel, who was a key middleman, a key figure in this entire deal, somebody whom uh, CBI and uh, ED were looking for, and somebody who allegedly influenced Indian officials and organized bribes, is apparently missing. Earlier, there was news that a Dubai court has ordered his extradition. But now we are given to believe that this was only an opinion because on the 27th of August, the UAE authorities had asked a UAE court whether a national of a British country can be extradited to India from the UAE. And an opinion has been delivered on that, but there is no extradition order. So what's the way ahead? Can we really get access to Christian Michel in the days to come? And why no official word from the Indian government? on this entire episode and this particular order from the UAE. Joining us now to take this forward is former CBI director A.B. Singh, BGP spokesperson Narendra Tareja, Congress spokesperson Priyanka Chaturvedi and former diplomat K.C. Singh. Thank you all for joining us. Ambassador K.C. Singh, first to you. 18 hours back, we hear this news that he's going to be extradited. CBI has no information. The government doesn't say anything on record. And now we, give, we are given to believe that this was only an opinion, not an extradition order. What does this show? You see, extradition, yeah, extradition is not merely a judicial process. It's not often understood that extradition is handled through foreign offices, but finally it's a political act. Uh, therefore, it begins with the foreign ministry in Abu Dhabi or in our case in Delhi. And they, I'm surprised they sought that opinion, if they sought that opinion, because I negotiated the extradition treaty as GS consular passport and visa in 97. And the treaty is very clear. I remember the Emiratis were only insisting that they will not extradite their own nationals. So we kept that in the treaty. But it's very clear in the treaty that you can extradite other countries' nationals or Indian nationals or nationals of any other country. But the fact that they were making this query means that the request has gone to the Foreign Office. They are making that query. Obviously, they did not read the treaty carefully. And only then they will decide to give it to a magistrate to opine on it, or has the magistrate mm. given, an, uh, given his judgment, and then they are referring back to him to say, mm. can we do it, which is, as I said, a political decision, can we send a British citizen out? Now, I would just like to add here, having been ambassador in Abu Dhabi, that Dubai has very close relations with yeah. Britain. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed, who is now the Prime Minister and the Vice President and the ruler of Dubai, he races horses, he spends his summer in England. Mm. There's a much closer relationship between Britain and Dubai than Britain and Abu Dhabi. So therefore, mm. I would be really surprised mm. if they act, acted very quickly and said, mm. here is an Englishman. And, uh, we can. So we don't know what is the stage. We need clarity on that. Mm. Okay, and uh, you know, Nantar Eja, to you, uh, this was supposed to be a big catch for the NDA government through which they could expose corruption, they could probably get to the bottom of the Augusta Westland VVIP chopper deal scam. But don't you think that there should have been more clarity from the government? It's been almost 20 hours since we've been hearing this news. There should have been some official clarity on what exactly has happened in the UAE. You know, these are media reports. We have seen the reports. The government will come out with the with the government statement on the issue or the government agency when the time is right and when they really have think that this needs to be there is something conclusive and that needs to be shared with the country so at that stage that will be done but we have seen the reports and our effort is very clear effort is to you know to to uh, to bring him to india and uh, also so that we can connect all the dots and this investigation into the corruption into this uh, you know bribes and all that issue is uh, is uh, is resolved and communicated to the people of this country because after all the money that was taken away belonged to the people of this country so our effort is on and the ministry of external affairs is working and as ambassador casey singh explained that there are you know channels and there are mm -hmm. procedures so that the government is pursuing along those lines but as far as the communication and all those things are concerned that will be done at the right time by the right agency of the government of india Okay, and uh, if I can quickly go across to uh, Mr. A.P. Singh, former CBI director. Mr. Singh, what has happened so far if this is only an opinion that has been sought from a UAE court and an opinion has been delivered that he can be extradited in future, are we really any closer to getting back 
this man, Christian Michel? Well, I think that uh, it's a positive development and our uh, relations with the UAE have been very good. And we have been able to extradite a lot of uh, people from the UAE. If you look at the records, then since 2002, we have extradited almost 20 people from the uh, UAE who were wanted by India. Now, most of these, uh, in fact, all of these were Indians. So this is the first time that uh, a foreign national would actually be extradited. So we have to see what the result of the court would be. Okay, Mr. Singh, I'll request you to hold on, but uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi, coming to you, the BJP has always said that uh, the Gusta Western Chopper deal shows corruption at the highest level in the UPA. There is a feeling in the BJP that they are close, the government is close to getting Christian Michel. What do you feel about the handling of this case in the last 24 hours and the way ahead? Uh, so firstly, uh, before I joined the debate, I was told that we will be speaking about Rafael and then we will also be speaking about Christian Michel. Uh, secondly, uh, I do not have any hesitation in talking about this issue simply because we know it is a witch hunting that has been started by the uh, BJP government to try and indict the UPA in every way possible. And that is a statement even coming from Christine Michel's uh, attorney, Miss Rosemary, who said she was being, uh, her client was being forced to file a statement which said which would indict some leaders from the Congress party. And this is perhaps the worst kind of witch hunting that you could ever come across just because you have to be, you are a political opponent of the government that is in power right now. And we would be more than happy if someone like Christian Michel, Michel comes to India, is extradited to India. However, what brings, uh, which makes us question the entire mo uh, uh, motive behind this, uh, you know, news that has been spreading through media channels and not being confirmed by the uh, government agencies is simply because nothing really uh, has been done in terms of bringing him to India and extraditing to him to India. Very clearly, it has come to forward that, is that the important uh, point. UAE government asked the courts, UAE government has asked the courts mm. if it is possible to extradite him. There has been no notice coming from the courts to extradite mm. him to, back to India and mm. so has the government of uh, India agreed to it. Very clearly, it is a motivated okay. campaign against the uh, Congress party, against mm. the UPA, which they continue to do. Let's not forget the facts of this entire deal. It was initiated during Mr. Vajpayee's mm. government. It was uh, the, the rules of the entire contract okay. in terms of agreement mm. were changed by Mr. Brajesh Mishra. Mm. And those are the people, unfortunately, he, they, both mm. of them are not amongst us today. What we see is a motivated, deliberate okay. campaign to malign a government which actually called for CBI orders now. and investigation and also asked I want to get for a this entire contract this. to be uh, you know, yeah. undone simply because Narendra of the Tanija. charges that were coming across. Priyanka Chaturvedi raising an important point, saying that the fact that there is nothing concrete, even 24 hours after this news broke, the Indian government has no paper in hand, it only goes to show that this is a motivated witch hunt. How do you respond? Well, motivated witch hunt, all the entire world, you know, joining hands with the BJP. There are no diplomatic, you know, UAE government doesn't understand these things. They are ready to go along with the BJP on the. I mean, all this is what it is. I mean, uh, Ambassador Casey Singh, who is luckily on the panel, just ask him, is it. And unfortunately, I don't want to have Tutu Meme with you. Please listen to me. I listen to you, listen to me. Okay? Now the thing is that all these things, you know, there are international protocols, there are diplomatic procedures, there is a diplomatic decorum. So these are the, as a big country, as the sixth largest economy of the world, you know, we, as a country on the high table, we know how, how to conduct these things. When it, we can have internal Tutu Memes and all that, but when it comes to external relations, you have to go along. You have to go along with certain protocols, certain, you know, certain decorums and things like that. So that's being done. The question is that I can understand why uh, Congress party is rattled because they know once this person is brought to India, then the person is going to, you know, share the whole story. Mm -hmm. Who took the money? What happened? What exactly happened? Who were all okay. involved? The point is the CBI is doing it. And the CBI is doing its job. It's a professional agency, autonomous organization. Uh, we are, why should they mm -hmm. be rattled? They're rattled because they've got something to hide. If you have nothing to hide, <laughs> put a smile okay. on your face and have a decent and civilized debate. All right. You know, Ambassador Casey saying, you've been... 
you've been in diplomacy Can I for decades. Answer, you have been in the UAE as well. You headed our mission there. I'm going to quickly come to you, Priyanka, but uh, I just need to get a response from uh, Ambassador KC Singh. Ambassador Singh, when there was such news going on for the last 24 hours, don't you think it was incumbent on the government to clear the air on what they know so far or at least say that we don't have a copy of the order? Not having any formal statement from the government on such a big matter, you know, it's a little baffling. Uh, Am I wrong in my yeah, judgment? First one, quick, uh, yeah, first one quick comment and then answer to you. My good friend AP is making a little mistake here because I was ambassador there when we started sending people back. They were deported from UAE. We never used the extradition treaty because they were Indians. So what they would do would be we bypass the whole procedure and they got deported. Now, being an Englishman, he will fight for it. So I don't know whether so far we've really tested the extradition treaty mm. and how the judges in UAE will deal with it. And I think that's the problem they're having because they don't mm. seem to have much experience because between GCC, they just hand over people to each other. And generally, they will deport or hand over to Americans or whoever mm. comes. This is a complicated case. Now, mm. once the case starts, uh, now, mm. I think the government should have clarified yesterday. Mm. We should know the... Now, today, some channels are mm. saying Arabic is being translated. For God's sake, we got interpreters. In Dubai, we've got interpreters in Abu Dhabi, our uh, own ambassador to UAE is fluent in Arabic. So if there's an order, they'll very quickly be able to see what that order is. So I think government, instead of all this debate developing, should have very quickly figured out what had happened. Mm. Is this a pre-extradition proceeding where a query is being made? Has an order been passed by a magistrate and there's a political judgment being made in Abu Dhabi? And that's why they are again asking the magistrate, can we send him out? Because that, that's mm. always done. The foreign office mm. will make a final determination mm. whether a person, even after a judge says, can okay. be extradited. The final call will yeah. be of the foreign office. Yeah. So we want to know at what stage the case is. Mm. Is it preliminary? Is it advanced? Is it mm. final? Surely in 24 hours we should have figured okay. that out. All right. Priyanka, one very quick uh, answer from you before we take a break and speak about Rafal. Uh, KC saying, clearly saying that there should have been a government statement, but Narendra Taneja feels all protocol has been followed. I'm sorry. Uh, as far as Mr. Taneja is concerned, unfortunately, he comes ill-prepared for debate, so I cannot argue with someone who's ill-prepared, but I can only state some facts. The facts are that UPA started this investigation under CBI. UPA is the one which cancelled the entire contract. UPA also ensured that transparency was maintained. Unfortunately, under their government in the BJP, mm. we, let's, let's start with the Lalit Modi, where the protocol was followed and he was allowed to get a pass, uh, to get a visa on the request of the foreign minister of this country. Let's not forget Vijay Malia, where the CBI uh, in its uh, entire defense uh, to get Vijay Malia extradited. Uh, the High Court, the UK High Court okay. judge has, uh, you know, gone on record to state that you, uh, India is not doing enough to extradite mm. Mr. Vijay Malia and, you know, all the developments after that show how the BJP government is hand in glove with such people. Let's not forget how Mehul uh, Choksi managed to get a no objection certificate for his citizenship right. uh, uh, in a country which he was seeking you know, a citizenship Priyanka, for. I'm sorry, you. Mr. Nirav Modi. Continue to yeah. get a photograph clicked as one of the most powerful businessmen in India okay. at the World Economic Forum with the Prime Minister of this nation. This is the truth. And the last reality is that Christian Michel's uh, attorney has gone on record to state that a okay. statement was being forced by uh, his, uh, you know, uh, the government of India to be signed by Christian Michel, which he refused to do and he continues to be hounded just to uh, you know, uh, continue right. the witch hunt against the government which was in power and against the senior leadership. Okay of the Congress All Party right. which opposed Mr. Priyanka, Narendra Modi. We're running out that of time. That is the reality of the Bharatiya Janata Party and they are so called We're going to take a short break here. We're going to, talk, to allow me we're some going to take time. a short break here. And Mr. Taneja, I'm coming to you. We're going to take a break. We'll talk about the Rafal deal. We request all our guests to stay with us. Welcome back. Congress today took the battle over the Rafale deal a notch higher. The party met the CAG today, the Controller and Auditor General, demanding a thorough time-bound audit of the Rafale deal, saying the center was duty-bound to reveal the price breakup to a constitutional body like the CAG. Congress alleges that uh, 
The 5,800 crore Rafale deal has caused a loss to the exchequer and has favoured a private company at the cost of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Let's go across to our guest straight. Narinder Taneja, the Congress is demanding a CAG probe, saying that there is a lot to answer and the government is duty-bound to explain everything about the Rafale deal and why it was changed to the CAG. How do you respond? Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I'll respond. But first thing first, you know, Priyanka ji made a personal remark against me and I have to make a remark. It's very simple. Priyanka ji, you are temperamentally unfit to be spokesperson. Temperamentally unfit. And Congress party <laughs> no, leadership must remove you from this unfair. soon as possible. No, you know, that's unfair. No, she made a personal Pareja, remark. I don't think she such called me ill she she, that I come ill-prepared. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She made a personal remark. So I have to return that. Now, coming to the coming to Rafal. You see, as far as Rafal is concerned, they are, they, they are, this is just basically to try to, uh, you know, attract attention, nothing all. They hope that this will make a headline. But they, at their heart, they know there is, there is nothing. They, this is not an issue. There is no controversy. They are just manufacturing something and going from, you know, uh, pillar to pole, this place to that place. But the point is, if you have something, what, do you, what exactly you're trying to say? What is the evidence? If you have something, share that with the people of the country. You know, and you don't have anything. We know that. You're basically trying to write something in water. And it's not going to hold. It's not going to sustain. It's not mm -hmm. going to survive. But they basically, because they mm -hmm. have no alternative to our, or our, you know, our work in terms of development. They have no alternative. So what they basically is doing, since they know the party is doing a great job, and people of India are happy. Look at inflation, look at FDI, look at everything. Mm. People of India know. <laughs> so they have no issue. Mm. That's why they're trying to build up mm. something and hope and pray that this will stick mm. and go in their favor. Mm. That's not how politics is. This is Rahul Gandhi brand of politics. And Mr. Rahul Gandhi, with all due respect, okay. is what Mr. Rahul Gandhi is. Ask even a child of the country, and he will tell you who Mr. Rahul Gandhi is and what okay, is his Priyanka, brand of politics. Narendra Taneja, Narendra Taneja is saying that <laughs> there is nothing that the Congress has to offer, no development, and that's why they're resorting to this. Oh, firstly, I must say, when ill-prepared spokespersons are so rattled, that they actually use the national television to ask You the, are ill-prepared. Uh, you, you, you are unfit. You are unfit to be a spokesperson. From the list, you come and only insert people. How you are unfit. I, I find, find you, you come really and amusing. only insert people. You know, you, That's only I, you, you know, because my you're my never prepared. You, know, you are I never did not prepared. Him. Him. You can't Let's not spell the fun. I did not interrupt him. I did not interrupt him. Let's not make any personal remarks. How rattled are you? Let's not make any personal remarks, Mr. Taneja. How ill-prepared are you? You come and only insert people. How ill-prepared are you? Hold on. You are the most, that that most no personal no remarks and against and anybody. You go for personal Mr. Taneja, I'll have to ask you this. You, no, no, she please, launched please, please, no That's personal habit. remarks. That's no personal habit. remarks. On I'm going to move on to KC Singh. Hold on. Let's have peace on that front. Ambassador KC Singh. Do you think now the question has come down to this? The opposition has been asking, 10th April 2015, what happened in Paris that this deal changed from 126 fighter jets to 36 fighter jets? Do you think that is a valid question and probably demands an inquiry like the Congress is asking, Ambassador Singh? Without going into the merits of this case or earlier cases, I think a lesson which both parties should draw right from Bofors downwards is that it's important that we have a consensus, it's important that governments are not seen as avoiding a debate. When governments start avoiding a discussion about the details, then people suspect there is something that they are hiding. And there's really no political advantage in doing that. Mr. Rajiv Gandhi was very badly hurt by Bofors. Uh, similarly, this one government by saying that no, we don't need to explain it to anyone is not a good enough explanation. This is a democracy where opposition or other parties or public have a right to know. And really what weapon system does any plane in the world has? which is not known to the competitors or known to CIA or known to the Russians or known to the Eurofighter. All these are in the Jane's book that carries all the weapon systems. So there is nothing. But if there is a tweaking which has been done for India, which is India specific, then it's important for the government to explain it and not get impatient and not simply get personal. And then we get this kind of a debate which we are getting where the spokesmen get personal because the merits are just not debated. And I think it's important that because the state of preparedness of the country, military preparedness, is extremely important, and many weapons systems can't be procured in time, uh, etc., it's important for the ruling party, whichever party it is now or in the past, 
to carry others with them, not necessarily give them all the details and everything which is not which, which is uh, connected to a weapon system is not secret. Everything is not secret. Secret in today's world, right. most of the stuff is known. In fact, the China, in fact, the Americans are saying the Chinese are stealing our plans and designs and so on and so forth. So there is nothing really that is secret. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, we, we're waiting for Priyanka Chaturvedi to return. But uh, in the meanwhile, AP Singh, looking at all the facts of the case, do you think the Congress has a point when they say that HAL was sidelined and the contract was given to a private entity and this entails an investigation, this needs an investigation, AP Singh? See, the matter is already in the Supreme Court, so let's await uh, the Supreme Court decision on this. As far as, uh, the invest as far as the criminal investigation is concerned, you need a money trail and you need a middleman. So that, so far, I don't think anybody has been able to establish that. And unless there is clear malified intent, it is difficult to question defense deals since many parameters are involved in purchase of an aircraft. Right. And, you know, Narendra Taneja, I think Priyanka Chaturvedi and also Mr. K.C. Singh has made this point that probably a clarity is needed. Somewhere the government needs to talk about the price of this aircraft and needs to put things into perspective for once. You see, the clarity, the question is, first of all, who would know about these things better, the Indian Air Force chief, Indian Air Force experts, or the opposition party, one opposition party. Number two, number two, the question is when it comes to CAG, we have got the systems in place. When, whenever the times come, the CAG and other institutions are going to invest, you know, yeah. audit and all that. There is a process for audit. You can't go to CAG and say, no, audit tomorrow audit this morning. That's not how it works. Any purchase by the government of India, by any government arm and agency is audited by, there is a process. You have to go follow the due process. Just because you have a political agenda, you can't go to CAG and say you invest, you audit it tomorrow morning. Is that how it works? We, do we live in a banana republic? A Congress thinks it's a banana republic. It's still not. You see, the question is, CAG will do its job when the, it comes. The files will go to CAG at the, in due course of time. That's how it works. But what they want, basically, they are not interested in anything. They only want to create, a big, try to, you know, the effort is to create something out of it so that they can go to the people because they have nothing substantial to offer. They have no alternative to our agenda, our work and all that. That's why they're doing it. But the people can see through it, the country can see through it. And uh, trust me, the country is just laughing at them. Okay. We'll have to leave it there for the moment. And uh, the Congress, of course, is going to... Fight the BJP over this issue in the days to come. And uh, we'll continue to follow the story very, very closely. The government, of course, saying that this deal is much better and cheaper than that of uh, the UPA. Ambassador AP Singh, Narendra Taneja, Priyanka Chaturvedi, uh, KC Singh, thank you very much for joining us.